Thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel today. We will not be live streaming our worship service today due to ongoing air conditioning repairs in our auditorium. While we are conducting regular service in our annex today, we are offering a recorded worship online in place of the live stream. We hope you will enjoy today's video and will join us next week for our normal live streaming service, or even better, in person with us at the building. Sing. I want to 
faith in Christ came, we were guarded by the law. We were locked up until this faith was made known. So the law was put in charge of us until Christ came. He came so that we might be made right with God by believing in Christ. But now faith in Christ has come, so the law is no longer in charge of us. So in Christ Jesus you are all children of God by believing in Christ. This is because all of you were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. You have put him on as if he were your clothes. There is no Jew or Gentile. There is no slave or free person. There is no male or female. That's because you are all one in Christ Jesus. You who belong to Christ are Abraham's seed. So you will receive what God has promised.
Jesus did a lot of his important teaching in the temple and a lot of it in the synagogues. But perhaps most of it he did out with the people in the streets and out in the countryside, away from hard organization and buildings, but just out there with the folks. Today we meet in the Missouri Street Church of Christ Annex. Now, this is not because June 26 is a special day, but it is because of broken air conditioning, because of staff shortening, and perhaps is a reminder from God himself of just how precarious a life we live with all of our plans. It is appropriate that we thank our Spanish brothers and sisters for their hospitality in this room. It's not that it's their room any more than the auditorium is the English member's room. But really, the earth and the sky, the very air we breathe, it's all God's. And in the same way, this room is God's room. But still, it's a blessing that they interrupted the flow of their gatherings to welcome us all together, so thank you very much for that. All around us, every day, but today, are signs of the changes that happen in life all the time. We know about this here, and maybe it's good even to have a practice. For we know weather and such can change during the course of this summer. We also know on the longer scale, 70 years ago, this was an oil field. And 70 years before that, this was where an orphanage was located. 70 years in the future, who knows? Now, there was a moment in Jesus' ministry that is unique in the Gospels. From the time of Jesus' birth until the last week of his life, lots of amazing things occur, but only one thing occurred that all four Gospel writers recorded. It's unique in that sense. It is the story we call the feeding of the 5,000. That is a moment when Jesus, in the middle of an otherwise empty field, fed and satisfied thousands of people. The story is told as a surprise. Jesus had been teaching, the people were there, and the day had gotten long, and some of them had gotten hungry. It's possible some of them had even said as much out loud. Jesus talked about feeding them all, but the twelve apostles weren't sure at all. They offered, perhaps, to discourage the project. Five loaves of five barley loaves and two fish, and said, This is all we have. And another apostle added, It might take 200 denarii to feed this many people. 200 denarii might be $20,000 in current money. You don't get the impression the apostles were trying to encourage Jesus in this project. But what he did was he took the fish, he took the loaves, and he sent out the apostles on a project. He said, seat the people out on this field in groups of 50. And uh, it was a grassy field at least. And while they're out doing them, that very thing perhaps, Jesus got busy turning five loaves and two fish into a meal for everyone. When the apostles returned, he sent them out to feed the groups of 50. The whole project Prob from preparing the food and setting it out to the people and eating it may have taken little more than an hour. 
But when it was over, there were 12 baskets full of pieces of bread. Jesus told them to go out and gather it. And we can imagine 12 apostles staring down at their basket. There would have been one basket for each apostle. And all around them would be 5,000 satisfied people. And they would have had something they could take with them in their ministry from there out. Jesus had turned a hungry and hopeless moment into happiness. And he'd, he'd done this with basically nothing. And the twelve could always remember what had happened. Now, we've heard the story, not just today, but again and again. And we know how there is out in the world right now hunger, both physically and spiritually. And we know there are people who are tired these days. And some of them are short on hope. May God help us to be a people who remember the baskets of bread and help always to keep hope, hope in abundance, ready for them, for all of those around us. to remember. The story that goes with these is this. Jesus was with his disciples in Jerusalem. 
It may have been the day that the Romans call the 20th of April. The Jews called it the 14th of Nisan, the day before Passover. The disciples wanted to know that day what they would do for the Passover meal. Jesus sent Peter and John to find a man who would take them to a room that was ready and for them to prepare for the meal. They did so. Like Peter and John did, let's do a little housekeeping. Most of us have spent the last few Sundays in our homes, some with family and some with friends. A few have been alone. Such has been our March and April this year. These two items make up what we call the Lord's Supper, the cup of the fruit of the vine and the bread. Like in that Passover meal, the fruit of the vine would have arrived in a bottle or a skin that had been purchased somewhere in the city, much like we have done. The bread could have been purchased too, or Peter and John could have made it themselves. We may still be away from each other a few more weeks. Here is a little about how to make matzos. The ingredients are flour, water, and perhaps oil and a little salt. The details of the recipe are as varied as our mother's recipes, but are all about the same. Two cups of flour will make about as much matzos as you will find in a box at a store. Put the ingredients in a bowl and mix them no more than a minute. Cut the whole into a dozen portions. Roll each out so thinly you can see through it a little. Bake it a few minutes. In this case, seven to eight minutes at 450 degrees. And that is it. If you're a little better than I am, it'll take about 30 minutes for the whole batch. Peter and John got these ready, along with the lamb and some vegetables. Now the Passover is a meal, but not a fancy meal. It is a meal with purpose. A little after sunset, at about 6.30 Roman time, everybody would have arrived and the lamps would have been lit. Every item on the table would have had a message to go with it. Each of the disciples would have shared the meal before in their own homes and with their own families many times. Now their families were five days away in Galilee. Tonight, they would be with their teacher. When Jesus got to the bread, he blessed it and broke it and said, Take Eat, this is my body. Let us pray. Father in heaven, through the eating of this bread, help us to remember. We ask this in Jesus' name. Then Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks for it and said, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my body of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray again. Lord of all, as we drink this, help us to remember this is our prayer in his name. Amen. The disciples finished the Passover with their teacher.
before the sun set again, Jesus had been crucified. In three days, Jesus had risen from the dead. May God bless us all with this hope today and until Jesus returns. Thank you, Father God, for this time together with you and with all who seek you. Thank you for bringing us to this moment, for calling us to be with you in every moment, and for promising us moments with you, infinite in number and wondrous beyond words in depth in the future, in your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for giving us all we need for life and godliness. May we not squander, rather, may we use wisely all you give us all of our days. And as we ask you to go with us now, we ask ourselves, just how will we give ourselves over to going with you all of our days and in every way? Show us the answer upon which you smile in every moment, because of Jesus, for his sake, and in his name we do pray. Amen. Holy Lord, most holy.